video we're going to talk about a special kind of product that only works for vectors in three dimensions and it's called the cross product. It's a product of two vectors that gives a third vector that is orthogonal to the other two vectors involved. So we'll start by showing you how to actually calculate this thing and then once we've done that we'll look at some of the properties that this vector has. So to calculate the cross product between vectors u and v what you need to do first is write the vectors down side by side like this. Now it's not the only way of doing it, but it's an easy way to remember the formula. So I'm going to write down this little lattice thingy on the right, and once you've written down the two vectors, then start again from the beginning and write down the next two entries again. So v1, v2 on the right there, and u1, u2 on the left over there. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to draw kind of like a shoelace pattern here. So we'll have an orange one, a green one, and a blue one. And starting from the top, we can work out the entries of our cross product vector by taking positive on the downward right going branches and negatives on the other ones. So for the yellow, the yellow shoelace, I'll have u2 times v3 will be positive, u2 v3 and then at minus u3 v2. It's negative for the ones going back again. If I look on the green shoelace, I've got u3 v1 minus um, u1 v3. And then if we look at the blue, I have u1 v2 minus u2 v1. Okay, now this, if you look in a textbook, the definition of the product will probably be what's in this box here, but that shoelace method is an easy way to remember how to actually calculate it. It's not the only way to remember, you may have come across a different method before, if you've met this before, but this is the way that we'll use in this course. So next we'll do a quick example just to get used to actually playing with this. So here's a typical example. Um, we want to find a vector that is orthogonal, that means at right angles, to both u is 1, 0, 1, and v is negative 1, 2, and 4. Okay, so I'll just define some little rough working space on the right here, and I'll write down the entries of u, and then start again at the beginning, the entries of v, and then start again at the beginning. So w, which is going to be u cross v, that's how we write the notation, is going to be 1 times 2, Okay, let's use the same colors we did before. So this is my, it's not even correct. This is my yellow lace here, so it's going to be 0 times 4 minus 1 times 2. And then in green, we'll have 1 times negative 1 minus 1 times 4. And then in blue, we'll have 1 times 2 minus 0 times negative 1. Okay, and what we should get, if we just do that little bit of maths, so we're going to have negative 2 first, we will have negative 1 minus 4 is going to be negative 5 second, and then third we're going to have 2. Now if we've done it correctly, then we should find that this vector here that we just calculated is orthogonal to both u and v. So let's just check that. u dot w is going to be 1, 0, 1 dot negative 2, negative 5, 2, which equals negative 2 plus 2, which equals 0. That's good. That's what we thought would happen. And then uh, v dot w will equal, um, what was v again? Negative 1, 2, 4 dot negative 2, negative 5, 2, which is going to be 2 minus 10 is going to be negative 8, plus 8 will be, so it's going to be 2 minus 10 plus 8, which also equals 0, which is exactly what we wanted. So this vector here is orthogonal to both of these. So for example, if u and v were direction vectors on a plane, 
um, W would be a good choice of a normal vector to that plane because it's at right angles to both. Right, so let's just quickly summarize some of the most important properties of the cross product. The first one is the one that we just checked, um, which is that the dot product of a cross product with either of the two vectors is equal to zero. So that's exactly what we said before. So that's the orthogonality one. Second one is that u cross v is equal to negative v cross u. Okay, so different direction depending on the order that you take. One will be positive, one will be negative. And it turns out that the cross product follows the right hand rule. So if you align u with your thumb, v with your index finger of your right hand, and then point out your middle finger uh, perpendicular to both of those, that will be the direction that the cross product points. Right hand rule. Okay, u cross v. Now the length of this has some kind of meaning, and it equals the length of u times the length of v times sine theta. So it looks very similar to our dot product formula. Now this time though, it's sine theta. So sine theta, as we know, starts at zero, goes up to one, and then back down to zero again. This is at pi over two. This is at pi. This is at zero. Remember pi over two is about 90 degrees, and pi is 180 degrees. So if the two vectors are in the same direction, if the angle between them is zero, cross product will be zero no matter what. Um, and then if the two are at 90 degrees, then the length of the cross product is the product of the lengths. Final thing I want to note is that the cross product is defined only for three dimensional vectors. It's a special thing that only works in three dimensions. Okay, last off, we're just going to show a quick application of the cross product, which is that of finding the area of a parallelogram or a triangle in three dimensions. So if I have vectors u and v, and what I actually want to find is this shaded area here, then I can remember from, uh, from trigonometry and geometry from school that the area here is equal to half the length of u. Okay, so just remember on a triangle, when you've got sides a, b, and an angle theta, then you've got area equals half a, b, sine theta. So for our triangle here, the lengths, uh, the side lengths are the lengths of the vectors u and v. So the area will be half length of u, length of v, sine theta. But that is just half the cross product of u and v. And if we wanted the area of the parallelogram instead, let's just say extend that one out to here. If I want this whole area now, um, we'll shade in that orange. So this is triangle area. The parallelogram area is just two of those triangles. A equals two times triangle area equals length of U, length of V, sine theta, which is the length of the cross product vector of u and v. Okay, so this is just a very quick introduction to the cross products. It comes up time and time again, especially when we're studying things that work in three dimensions, like for example, how water moves in 3D, that kind of thing. So for now, we'll just think of it as a method of calculating a vector orthogonal to two others, and also as a way of calculating areas in space. But it turns out it has a lot more meaning than this that you'll come across later on in your careers.